Hey, look who's here. Miss Tava's here. Hey, How you doing? Guys? Hey. hey! It's so good to see all you guys. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited for this new program that we have, Brooke. It's, it's awesome. And guess what? We are going to be able to do kids' small groups through this program. Seriously? Yeah, it's going to be so awesome. When does it start? So this coming Wednesday, we are going to have live Zoom calls for the kids. There will be links below, and I'll call in, you guys call in, and we'll discuss what we just went over in, in oh, a awesome. lesson. So we're going to be talking about like Ma Martha and Mary and spending time with Jesus and everything? Absolutely. It's going to be the so greatest. Cool. And they're going to get to see their friends and everything? Yeah, yeah, all of the kids can That's call awesome. in. All the kids in in New Hope are welcome to join us for for KSG this year. We no signing up, none of that stuff. You can just join us on the Zoom call this Wednesday, six o'clock for the younger kids, and then six thirty for the early elementary, and seven o'clock for older elementary. Click the links below that apply to your kids, and we'll have you. We'll be on online, ready to go. That is awesome. Well, thank you so much. I can't wait. I hope you guys all show up on Wednesday. Hope to see you then. So good. We'll see you then. Bye. Hey, New Hope Kids. Welcome to New Hope Kids Online. My name is Miss Brooke, and I am so excited about today because we're starting a brand new series called Blast Off. Now, it's all about learning how to launch our faith in God learning how to be closer to God, learning how to be more the people that he wants us to be, and of course, having fun while we're doing all that. So this video is for my elementary kids. So if you are one of my ninjas in first, second, or third grade, or if you're one of my New Hope Knights in fourth or fifth grade, this video is for you. So ninjas and knights, get ready to blast off. But before we get started with that, let's enjoy some worship music together. So get up on your feet, get ready to dance, sing, and praise the Lord.
You know, I really love that video because I mean, what a cool image of what it's like to just go after God, to look for him, to want to hang out with him. Because you know, that's kind of what he wants from us. He wants us to want to be with him and he wants to be with us too. In fact, that's our big idea for today, that we can spend time with God. And we're gonna be talking more about what that looks like. But before we get into all that, I have a couple questions for you. So you've noticed we kind of have this whole space theme going on here, right? So imagine that you're an astronaut and you're going, you're blasting off, you're going up into space for a whole year. Now, what food do you think you would miss the most while you're up in space? What earth food? Mm. How about people? What people on earth do you think you would miss the most if you were gone for a whole year in space? Well, it's probably a few of them, I bet. So my next question is, let's imagine you finally are coming back to earth after a whole year of being gone. And what kind of food are you gonna want for your welcome home party? It's probably quite a few, right? Now, if you were up in space for a whole year, I have a feeling that you'd be really excited to come home, but it probably would be more than just the food or just the party. It probably would be so that you could spend time with the people that you love, right? So today we're gonna hear a story about two sisters and their friend, Jesus. Now, one sister was really excited about spending time with Jesus. And actually, both of them were too, but the problem was that one of the sisters was so busy worrying about getting the house ready and cooking the food and getting ready for the party that she kind of didn't have enough time to actually just spend time with Jesus. So their story can teach us something really important about how we can launch our faith into new heights and kind of like blast off. I'm Bobby and I grew up on, on my family's farm. I moved to the big city, let adventure take me far. It's Hobbies with Bobby, Bobby, yeah! This is Hobbies with Bobby. Oh, hi there. I'm Bobby. Welcome to my family's farm. I grew up here, but now I live in the city. I'm kind of obsessed with hobbies. I can't keep track of how many hobbies I've learned here. Probably a million or two. <laughs> I love trying new things. This is where we can relax and visit. When I'm here at the farm, my parents ask that I help them with farm chores. And today, I've been taking care of the goats. I know it sounds fun, but it's a lot of hard work. I need to scrub their pen, wash them because they get covered in bugs and mud, and feed them constantly. There is always work to do. I only work outside the big goat pen because only real farmers should go in there. Today, I notice one of the goats is acting strange. The tiniest ones won't leave me alone. She nibbles at my clothes and even my fingers, but she isn't eating her food. I don't know what to do. Honestly, it's pretty lonely out there doing all the chores by myself. Oh. We have a very helpful neighbor out here. We call him Farmer Mason. Sometimes I ask him farm questions. Maybe I can track him down and see what he says. He said he'll be down in a minute or two. Perfect. That gives us time to check to see what the Bible might have to say about my situation. It's Bible time. Time for the Bible, yeah! It's Bible time with Bobby. So there's a story in the book of Luke that I think might help us today. Jesus and his friends were visiting some friends named Mary and Martha. Mary sat at Jesus' feet and listened to his teachings, but her sister Martha ran all over the house making the meal and getting ready for all the guests. Finally, Martha got worn out and complained to Jesus. She said, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Jesus replied and said, Martha, 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 you are worried about many things, but only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better and it will not be taken away from her. 
Jesus is saying that Martha was working hard, but she was distracted from what really mattered. Mary got it. She knew that she could spend time with God. Oh, come in. Oh, hi, Farmer Mason. Thanks for coming over. Finally, another human face. Yeah, no problem. Who is this? These are my friends. Oh, hi, everybody. Nice to meet you. Yes, so I was just telling them that I was doing all the goat chores today, and the tiny goat wouldn't leave me alone. Hmm. She was nipping at my hands and following me everywhere. Do you think she's sick? Hmm, okay, let me think. Does she have extra drool today? Mm, no more than usual. Okay. Um, is her stomach all fat and bloated on the sides? What? No. Okay. Well, then I think I've got it. What? What is it? Is, is she sick? Is she dying? Oh, no. What? No, she has the same problem that you have, I think. What? Well, I think she is lonely. Hmm. Well, what do you mean? Okay. Well, she wants to spend time with you, right? You're doing all of the work, but missing out on all the fun. Goats, just like humans, want to play around. You are doing all the chores for the goats, but missing out on spending time with the goats. Wow. Well, what? What are you thinking about? Well, I just read a Bible story about the same thing. Martha worked hard and got the task done, but missed out on spending time with Jesus. I know that story. Do you want to know some really cool parts about it? Okay. Mary wasn't just being lazy. She was being bold. She went out into the teaching place where only men were allowed, and she sat right down in front of Jesus, the teacher. She wanted to spend time with God even when it wasn't accepted by others. Whoa. So how can I do that? Hmm. Well, with the goats, I think you maybe got to be bold and go all the way into the big pen. I know it can be scary, but anyone who loves the goats and wants to spend time with them will do great in there. They need workers and friends, and I think you can do that really well. Well, how do I spend time with God? Hmm. Well, what do you think? Well, I can't get distracted by all the things that's happening in my life, like school, friends, meals, and games, but I can, I can turn those things into ways to spend time with God. I can pray while I do my chores, I can talk to and listen to God while playing sports or being with my friends. That is exactly right. That is a great answer, Bobby. I pray while doing my work all the time. God teaches me through the farm work. But like Mary, it's also important to stop working and spend time with God, just like you learned from the tiniest goat today. That is so true. Thanks for your help. Oh, you're welcome. Well, I'm definitely ready to stop working and start playing with Tiny Goat. You're welcome to come hang with me, and I'll see you again next week. I'll tell you about the goats and how it goes. Praying while I do things. Remember, you can spend time with God anytime. See you soon. This is Hobbies with Bobby. So think about that story for a minute, okay? So here's Jesus and his good friends with Martha and Mary and their brother Lazarus. And Jesus is going to go to Martha and Mary's house for dinner. But when he gets there, only Mary really is interested in spending a lot of time with him. Now, Martha's really happy he's there, but she's cooking and she's cleaning and she's so worried about everything. And then she gets mad at Mary because Mary's not helping at all. She's just sitting there. So do you think Mary did anything wrong? Hmm. How about Martha? Do you think Martha did anything wrong? Okay. See, the thing is, Jesus wasn't angry at Mary. In fact, not at all. He didn't think she was doing anything wrong. He was happy that Mary wanted to spend time with him. And the thing is, that even though he did correct Martha, and he told her, hey, just come on over and sit down with me. He wasn't angry with her. Because in the end, he just wanted her to hang out with him too. So how can we spend more time with God? I mean, Jesus doesn't live here on earth anymore, so we can't have him over for dinner. So how can we spend time with God? Well, we can pray. We can talk to him. We can read the Bible. We can listen to worship music and sing songs that praise him. 
We can read Bible stories with our families. We can go to church or we can watch New Hope Kids online. Those are all ways that we can spend time with God. You know, there was a man named Paul. We call him Paul the Apostle. You might have heard of him. He's pretty important. And he once wrote a letter to some people to try to help them understand uh, how to spend more time with Jesus. And here's one thing that he wrote. This is out of Colossians 4.2. It says, Devote your time in prayer. Always be watchful and thankful. Devote. Wow. Devoting. You know, when you devote your time, you, when you, or you're devoted to something, it means that you really want to do it a lot. You're kind of like all in, you know. Now, prayer is one way that we can spend time with God. But just like Martha, sometimes we get so distracted with just all the things that we do in our life that we just kind of forget about spending time with God. Just like Mary, or just like Martha, got so busy doing all that stuff around the house that she felt like she didn't have time to spend time with Jesus. Now, I don't know about you, but I totally get distracted from God sometimes. And usually it's by all kinds of things. You know, I'll get up in the morning and I'll think, oh, I got to do this and I got to do that and I got to do this. And before you know it, I've been so busy all day long and doing good things. It's not like I'm doing bad things. But then here we get to the end of the day and then I'm tired and oh, I didn't spend any time with God. So what are we supposed to do? Well, I'll tell you. Spending time in, with God, it's kind of like training to be an astronaut. I mean, if you're an astronaut, you have to train, you have to practice every day, right? And if we want to spend time with God, then we have to practice that too. Because if we do it every day, even if it's hard, if we do it every day, then it starts to get easier because it becomes like a habit, like, you know, just something we kind of do. So, it's still tough though, because how do we make time in our day for all that? Well, you know, it's easy to think we don't have enough time. So let's do a little experiment here to kind of take a look at that. So I have here, I have a glass, and this is gonna remind me of how much time I have in the day. So when the glass is full, I don't have any more time in my day, it's all done. And let's see, the first thing I'm gonna put my glass, all these little beads, this is just all stuff I have to do. I mean, it's not like a big deal stuff. I mean, if it's things that I need to do, it's sleeping, it's eating, it's doing chores, it's going to school, doing homework. It's just stuff I need to do every day, okay? So I'm gonna pour those in there. All right. Wow, that's a lot of stuff. It takes up a lot of time actually, but okay. And then we're also gonna look at some things that I like to do because, you know, I want to make time for things I like to do, like playing games or hanging out with my friends or going to walk with my husband. So I've got these things that are going to go in there too. Okay. So those are things I like to do. So these are kind of things I have to do. These are things I like to do. And, oh, but then there's some really important stuff too, like spending time with God or making time for maybe a friend who's having a really hard time. Those are the really important things. They're big things and they're important. But now look what's happening. I don't, I don't oh, it's kind of on top there, but it's not in my jar. So that means I ran out of time. I don't have time for those things. So now what I'm gonna do? Hmm, let's try to look at this a different way. So here I have my empty day again, my empty glass showing all the time in the day. This time I'm going to start with the big things, okay? So I'm going to start with the things that are big, the most important things. And I'm going to put those in there first. So that's my time with God and some really important relationships in my life, okay? And now I think I'll put in the things that I like to do because, you know, you got to make sure you're doing the things you like to do too, right? So, okay, so we got that, right? All right. And now let's try 
Now let's see, gosh, I don't know. That's a lot of stuff I still need to do. So let's see if I can make that work, okay? Give me just a minute here. Let's see if I can. So look what happened when I arranged things differently. I got everything in there. So I started with the most important things. And then I added the things I like to do. And then I added all that other little stuff that I need to do. Now you can try this at home on your own. All you need is some kind of container, some big objects, some medium objects, and some little bitty objects. Um, but try it. I think you might be surprised with what you find. And you know, it's kind of like that with our time too. When we can start out our time with our day and really be spending our time with God, it kind of makes it so that it makes God a priority. And then suddenly we kind of have time for the other stuff in our life too. It all just seems to fit just like everything fit in my jar, even though it didn't fit when I started out with all the small stuff, then I didn't have time. But the small stuff kind of fits around the big stuff. And that happens with our time too. So try that at home. Now, as a way to help you remember this, when you download the, the take home for today, you're gonna find a paper on there and it's gonna have a little uh, kind of a, a space coloring sheet, but it's gonna have a little rocket ship next to every day of the week. Now, every day, I want you to really, really work hard this week to try to spend a little bit of time with God. It doesn't have to be a long time, just a few minutes, maybe five minutes, just talking to him or singing to him or reading the Bible about him. And every day that you do that, I want you to color that paper in, that rocket ship in. And then at the end of the week, if you can get it all colored in, first of all, give yourself a big pat on the back because that's kind of a big accomplishment, but it'll help you start that habit. And then I want you to ask your mom or dad to take a picture of your paper and email it to me at brooke at go-newhope.com so that I can share it on our New Hope social media pages. So I hope that, that you'll do that with me. So one more thing that we want to do today is our Bible verse for this whole month. We're going to be learning Psalm 119, 105. And the book of Psalms was written by King David. King David was a really great king and he loved God so much. But the thing is, he wasn't perfect. In fact, he messed up a lot. But throughout his whole life, he never stopped trying to be friends with God. He always turned back to God. And that was one thing that helped him be a good king because he also helped to lead his people to God. So the whole book of Psalms is all about David talking about God. And what he says in this verse, Psalm 119, 105, is your word is like a lamp to my feet and a light on my path. And we're gonna learn it with some, some hand motions that will actually help you. But, uh, so some hand, some sign language uh, words to help you with that are, uh, let's see, four, so we're gonna like that, or your, I mean, your is like that. Then word, we go like that with our hands. Then light, actually, we put our hands, our, our little fingers like that up, that's light. And then feet, we take our two little fingers like this, like feet, and then path, path, okay? So let's take a look and put it all together. Psalm 119, verse 105. Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. So let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for just wanting to be with us. Thank you for wanting to be our friend. Um, I just ask for your help this week to help us all to, to make the time to spend with you. Help us to make good choices with our time and help us to give you the time that you deserve. Uh, thank you for loving us so much. And um, please just help us this week in making time for you and making time to spend with you. In Jesus' name, amen.
All right, guys. Well, that's all I have for you today. I hope you had a great time. Make sure you practice that Bible verse. Make sure you download the take home and make sure you ask your mom or dad to send me a picture so that I can post it on the New Hope social media pages. Um, I hope you remember all week to spend your time with God. Every single day, spend a little bit of time with God and um, have a great week and I'll see you next time. Bye.